Hey YouTube family, Mr. Black Mumbo 305 here with, again with you. And today we're going to take a look at the Beretta APX Centurion. So this is going to be a full length feature review of the APX Centurion. So if this is not something you want to sit down and watch, you might as well click off right now. But if you want to see a true review on everything, on the specs, I'm not going to be doing any takedown. Stay tuned and let's keep and let's keep going. Um, if you have not subscribed to the channel before you watch this video, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you're going to enjoy the review. And like a lot of YouTubers out there, I'm not really going to do a lot of craziness waving the gun around with a Glock switch and acting stupid. I find that a lot of stuff going on YouTube now, it's just, you know, like pick up you just want to see. Nobody really wants to watch feature uh, length of reviews and see what guns are really like anymore. But I'm going to stick to my uh, to my guns and what I really want to do on my channel, which is review guns and do good reviews of it, be honest. And then that's where I'm going to take my channel. Yes, I still want to do shorts, but I want to do good reviews and show people uh, what they can expect uh, from a firearm that I've purchased, that I've had experience with. And so they can have a pretty decent idea, you know, what to get when the, when they're buying the said firearms. So with that said, you know, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, like, share the video if you like it, and go in the comment, blow it up, and that helps um, put the, the channel in YouTube's algorithm. And again, let's go. So like I said before, this is going to be a feature uh, a feature length review. I'm not going to cut any, do any shortcuts. The gun has been safety set. I do have a loaded magazine here with me, but at no time I'm going to really put a magazine in the firearm, charge it, and do anything stupid. So with that disclaimer said, all the crazy people out here are going to blow up my uh, uh, comment section and tell me I said this, I did this and this and that. Um, I'm quite aware of uh, uh, where I'm pointing the muzzle and if the gun is loaded. So I'm pretty good on that. Now, if you guys see me look up, I have a chart that I'm looking at to give you some of the specs. I didn't memorize all that stuff. Uh, the points I'm going to ring off from the top of my head is a uh, performance, what it feels like, so forth, so forth. But in terms of specs, I'm going to be checking my sheet to tell you what exactly the specs are with this gun. I don't memorize that kind of stuff. So first off, guys, this gun is a striker fire pistol. And um, again, like I said, gun is safety check, nothing. Uh, so if I point it towards my head, I'm going to turn it away. And then uh, so for safety reasons. So again, let's get on with it. So this is a striker fire pistol, meaning that um, the hammer is internal. Uh, so you don't see an external hammer, just in case anybody does not know, this is a striker fire pistol. And I think this was uh, Beretta's first iteration in the striker fire market. And, uh, and I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, this was, um, again, this was put forward uh, for a military, uh, military trial that the military had to, to find a new sidearm. Obviously, you guys know that SIGSAR won that, uh, that, 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 that contract. Beretta previously was the one who had that contract with the military with the M9 series of pistols. Um, and so uh, this where it was their introduction in that market. Didn't really go well for them because obviously uh, the military went with um, uh, Sig Sauer. So uh, it's not a hammer. It's not hammer, uh, striker, hammer, hammer fire pistol, it's striker fire. And the difference with hammer, hammer is external, striker fire is on the inside. The striker fire just strikes uh, the, the round on the, in, on the inside and setting off the round. Now next up, the barrel length. Um, as you guys can see, the, bar the length of the barrel, meaning from here, where the round enters the chamber, to the tip right here, is 3.7 inches. Um, it's a little bit shorter than a Glock uh, 19, but it's Glock 19 size. It's meant to compete with guns like the Glock 19 and other subcompacts. So um, that's, that's a pretty decent value. In terms of uh, carry firearm, uh, it's a pretty nice size. Um, uh, the width of the, the slide is a little thick for some people. Me personally, uh, it doesn't bother me. I'm a pretty thick guy, weigh 205 pounds, so I got some cushion in there to hide this barrel. But um, if it's uh, if you if you don't really want a super wide barrel, then this is might not be the gun for you. But if you don't mind, then this is perfect. Now this one comes in various calibers: 40, 9 millimeter, 45. Or I'm sorry, I don't think they carry a 45, but this is 9 millimeter and 40. So um, this one is in 9mm, this is the Beretta APX Centurion, obviously this is what the review is about. So this is what I chose uh, to get. This one comes with two 15 round magazines. So those are your options for caliber, 9mm and 40 Smith & Weston. Depending on the, si um, uh, the size you get, the full size or the compact or the subcompact, you're gonna, it's going to come with two either 10 rounds, 13 rounds or 15 round magazine. I got a 9mm, 9x19, so this came with two 15-round magazines. And the magazines 
Uh, I don't know if you guys watch my channel. I had a little bit of problem with the magazine. This is what happened. A lot of people said it's the oil that I put on it. But this gun has been in the ulster since I've owned it. The leather ulster. I haven't used any different oil that I that I use on my other guns. I've used the same oil on pretty much all the guns I have. And this is the only magazine that has this finish. The same finish goes there on the barrel. I don't know exactly what was happening there. Everybody wanted to tell me that it was my fault and I did something and this and this and that. But I have multiple other firearms and this is the only firearm, which is one of the newest firearms because I've only had it for like maybe uh, two years and it had that kind of finish. Very disappointing. So very disappointed with Beretta. I sent it into them. They gave me pretty much, eh, whatever, deal with it. Uh, or if you want to change it, send 300 bucks. I didn't send it, so I keep it. So later on, I'm going to go ahead and circle this. Like I said, the barrel length um, is pretty much uh, 3.7 inches. And so it's got like a nitrite finish, as you guys can see. Nothing special there. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much it on the barrel. The overall height of the inches is 5.19 inches, meaning from the bottom to the top, 5.19 inches. That's what you're getting. So if you are deciding if you want a gun that sticks out past a certain point, now you know the measurements of the height from the top to the bottom. Now the length, meaning from the rear of the pistol to the front of the pistol is 6.97 inches. That's what you're getting. So if you have a ruler, take that out, measure it, and that's what you're gonna get from tip to butt, <laughs> or butt to tip. Now the overall width, meaning the width, total widest point on the pistol is gonna be 1.30 inches. That's how wide it is. So if you want to know if it's going to stick out inside your waist, that's what it looks like. And before I go on, I just want to give you guys a once over, show you guys what it looks like. So you guys know what you're getting into. Give you some 3D look there. Throw it around real quick. Point it away from my face. Back look like. Again, it's been safety check. This one is wearing a whole grip. I love whole grip. Nice rubbery grip. I put that on there. Now, again, the sight radius, guys, for this um, for this pistol is 5.7 inches, meaning the sight radius from back here to up here, 5.7 inches. You guys already know that, um, and this one comes with a three-dot sight. They're metal, unlike the Glocks. Uh, that are plastic. This one comes metal and these one aren't adjustable, but they are removable So that's the sight you're getting a lot of people can remove these and put on Ivis sight in the front or adjustable in the rear whatever you guys choose whatever will fit for it So keep that in mind the sights are not adjustable at all. They're removable Now for the APX Centurion, which is the one I have uh, the unloaded weight weight. I'm sorry the unloaded weight is 27.7 ounces which is to me is pretty light uh i think this uh, a female can carry this all day i don't have a problem carrying this one but obviously with a loaded mag accessories um lights or laser and whole grip or not uh you know that the weight might change so if it's already heavy at 27.7 ounces and you're gonna cry about that then this is not the gun for you you need to go with something lighter but 27.7 is pretty manageable female or male now, I spoke a little bit earlier about the slide that uh, I had a problem with the finish, as you guys can see. Again, I did nothing to that finish. It's just how it wore. And people are going to want to say, oh, it's uh, the oil that you used and this and that. I didn't use anything special on it. You know, I use REM oil to clean all my guns. And that's what it looks like. I did not do anything to this gun. It's a pretty shitty finish. I'm really disappointed in Breda. Breda is one of the oldest gun company in the industry. Um, I, I bought it and within a year I bought it from Bass Pro Shop. Uh, by the way, the price for this when I purchased it was about $375. Um, they might be a little bit higher now or lower depending on what happened at COVID. Um, but when I purchased it, it was about $350, $375. Uh, within the first year I bought this from uh, Bass Pro Shop, um, I sent it into Beretta. They made me send it in. I told them what the problem I was having and they told me uh, pretty much to send them $300 and they'll replace the side and the magazine. Uh, uh, I've had guns, uh, problems with other guns that I've sent in, you know, and, you know, they try to work with you. Beretta didn't do such a thing. 
Um, Bread has been taking billions of dollars out of the gun industry for years. The least they can do is, um, you know, is give back to, 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 to the community, the gun community. And the, the, the customer service there was trash. It was utter trash. Um, uh, they, they pretty much just shrugged me off and sent back the gun to me because I didn't want to pay $300 for the gun it was okay with me because eventually i am going to go seracote this the top the slide uh maybe do uh, a desert tan or uh uh i don't know just depend on what uh what i feel like i'm going to seracote the top but the, the slide as pretty much like a ribbed uh a rib kind of section here um it's okay it does pretty well um i fired this uh, with gloves, it feel pretty well. I've never had blood in my hand when firing this, but if you have blood on your hand and you're firing this, uh, everything gets a little slippery. But uh, but the, the ribbed uh, slide is it, not bad. You know, it, it's doable. It's a little bit different than what you're normally used to on other guns like Glocks and Sigs and other and the previous Berettas. But um, I guess they were trying to stand out, and they did. Uh, a lot of people like the slide. Some people really don't. I have no problem with it. Um, it shoots just well. Uh, this thing is a very soft shooting uh, gun. Uh, my girlfriend, she loves shooting this. I think this is probably her favorite uh, gun to shoot. Uh, it shoots very soft. Uh, you get back on target fairly quick, and um, and it comes with 15 rounds. Uh, so like I said, if my girlfriend can handle it, your girl can handle it, and you guys definitely can too. But the slide, like I told you, the finish was a little bit shitty. Uh, this is probably one of the worst finish in any Beretta that I've seen. And I know this is kind of normal. I don't know if I got a lemon, but mine, uh, this, that's how the slide was. Uh, and you can see the same wear right there on the guide rod and, and back and here on the top, in the front of the slide. Even on the barrel, had the same thing. And, um... Uh, I just don't understand where that came from. But, you know, I still love the gun. It's an amazing pistol. It's a great shooter. And so I'm not going to complain too much. So as with a lot of the other um, uh, guns that were introduced in the military's trial for their newer sidearm, this one is also ambidextrous, meaning that everything on the left is on the right. Um, that can be switched to the right. Um, the slide release can be switched to the right side. So... Is everything else so is the mag release you can put it on the left side also so that's pretty good so with this gun you can uh, pretty much turn this uh, uh, compact into a, a full-size gun because it's a chassis system so all you do you buy a different chassis for a full size or a subcompact and you can change out this gun into one of those obviously you have to change the barrel also but um, so, so this is a chassis system which is pretty good uh, most of the guns that were introduced in the military sidearm um, uh, for, for the military sidearm added chassis system, the SIG, the Glocks, um, the FN, and this one is no different. So uh, for the price that you're going to pay for this one, uh, $350 to $375, you're getting a pretty versatile gun. It's very ambidextrous, um, very soft shooting, um, and, and it's, it's really a joy to shoot. My only problem that I had with it, again, was you know the slide finish. Now this gun comes with three back strap, and to be honest with you guys, they're a little bit difficult uh, to pull down. It was just a song and dance. I have pretty long fingers, so I really don't have a problem with either one, uh, small, medium, or large. Um, uh, the, 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 the back strap that were on it, they were pretty decent, but I love old grip, so I went ahead and put the old grip on. Uh, as you guys can see, that old grip has a little different kind of swell to it, and it fit perfectly with mine. Since I have very long fingers uh, on a long hand, it fits in just great for me. As you guys can see, my whole hand wraps around it very, very nice. Um, the trigger pull, guys, is pretty sweet. I can't, uh, I can't complain. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the trigger pull. That's it. Show you the reset. Right there. And the pull one more time. Reset. Almost no take up, just a tiny bit, and there it goes. So follow up shots are a pretty much amazing. You know, what I mean, it, you get right back on target. Like I said, the recoil is very soft shooting, so it's easy to get on sight. When I just got this uh, this gun, this was shooting a little bit low left for me. I don't know what was with that to the point where I, I was gonna buy a siding tool and just change that sight. Um, but I don't know. Lately, I took it to the range, and it's kind of pretty much on point. 
you know, I don't know if I was just, you know, seeing double or whatever. I was squinting one eye too much or not. But it was shooting left, a uh, little low left to me, uh, for, for me actually. And then I took it to the range a few days ago and it was pretty much on point. My girl shot this gun and she was dead on like her first shot. So then I took it and I was pretty much on point with it too. So I can't really uh, tell what was going on with that. I guess it just needed like a breaking period. A lot of guns, they have a lot of burrs in them. And when you just get them, they're going to shoot a certain type of way. And as you put about two, three, four, five hundred 500 rounds, especially like a thousand rounds to it, it starts finding its own way. And I think it just starts to straighten itself out. This one, I have about 600 rounds to this one. Um, uh, it's held up pretty decent except for the slide, like, like I can tell. But for me, I really love this pistol. I really wish I had got weight and got the optic ready version because uh, this would be an, an amazing optic, uh, uh, optic ready version to carry. But I didn't, and so, but I still love this one. I think what I'm going to eventually do, like I said, I'm sorry guys, is take off uh, a circle the slide, put an IVIS sight, and just leave the rear sight right there. And then that's pretty much going to do it for this one. In terms of the trigger guard, it's very, uh, very, um, what do you say, uh, bountiful, if you could say. It's a pretty big trigger guard, so if you're living in the winter areas and you think that you're, you're going to have to wear gloves or pull this out, you're going to have more than enough room, you know, to take that thing out. So look at all that space that I have in there, guys. That's a pretty, pretty... Uh, a pretty big trigger trigger guard, man. It gives you ample room to put your big fingers in there, your small fingers in there, your glove fingers in there. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, one thing I like with this gun, you can press check this gun pretty easy on surface. If one of your hand is down, I like how they get, they, they kind of cut that little piece. If, if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see how the barrel sticks out a little bit. I, I don't know why they did that, but for me, if, if, if I'm hurt in a firefight and I need to, you know, uh, press check this thing on the ground or on the side of a table, then you guys definitely can see that it's mad easier than a lot of other guns because that thing just sticks out and it's, and, and it's pretty pronounced. It's not something that, you know, that's just a little bit stick out. It sticks out. The barrel, you can see the barrel at the front of the gun. Uh, I didn't really see anything on the internet or anybody talking about that, why it sticks out so much. But for me, um, that's something that I definitely could use. You know, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So now if I was in, uh, in, a, in a shitty in the fan situation, my hand is behind me. I put in, I take out a magazine, put it in my hand, slam it down. And I want to wrap that, uh, that, that other slide. Now, this is what I'm talking about. It is so easy. Like you can rack it with the, with the front side post, which is metal, like I said before, which is mad easy. That's one way. Or you can just put it right here where the barrel, it doesn't touch a barrel and rack it the same way and you are good to go. You know, that was done just for, you know, just to show you guys uh, what that is like. And so that is a pretty decent thing. You know, I really like that. And again, the pistols are pretty sweet shooter. Uh, I, I can't really complain much about it. It's a pretty nice shooter. Uh, the slide just ticks me off and the way our Beretta treated me uh, when I sent it back to them within the year of me having the warranty and how they, uh, how they treated it was, was, was pretty shitty. Um, one thing I've noticed about this pistol is every time, uh, let me just show that again. I don't know what this is. I know you see that little doohickey right there. Every time you fire the gun, that thing pops up. You know what I mean? It pops right up. You know, I think it's a, I think they say something like it's a, I don't know, fire pin block or striker deactivation button or fire pins. I don't really know what that is. So if anybody in the comments know what that is, please feel free to let me know what that little do icky is and what it does. This is not the first Beretta that I've seen that has that thing, you know, so if you guys know what this is in the comments, go ahead and let me know. Now, for, for me, uh, let's talk about um, uh, the positives of this pistol, and then we're going to talk about negative, then just wrap it up in my final thoughts. So, number one, positive, the price. The price is amazing. You can find these, again, like I said, uh, Cabela's, Bass Pro Shop, uh, Kentucky Gun Company, wherever you guys can find them. I will just search around, and you can find these for about $350 to $375, depending on where uh where you buy them how much the person that is selling them is doing for shipping uh depending on where you're picking up your firearm so the price might add up to a little bit over 400 dollars for me uh where i live my ffl they charge me like 20 dollars for every gun and if i have two guns it's i think it's uh 35 dollars for two guns you know so i have a pretty sweet deal where i'm from and most of the guns that i buy 
Um, I get a lot of them from Kentucky Gun Company where that's free shipping. Uh, sometime uh, Palmetto State Army has free shipping. So if you guys want to look into those, uh, you can definitely check out uh, gundeals.com. Uh, gundeals.com, they have an uh, app and they will pretty much when you look for one gun, it will give you pretty much um, pretty much most places that sell that gun and then the highest to lowest price and their shipping and handling. So check out gundeals.com, download that app and when you're ready to search for any gun, that should be the first place you look and then they will direct you in the right place. Um, they pretty much get all the information from all the different um, uh, carriers and then they consolidate it in one useful app and show you where you can find it. So that was my first thing. Uh, the price is pretty sweet. Uh, for a gun that was introduced in the military, um, for the military trials, uh, they put a lot of features in it. Um, it's a pretty sweet gun. Um, I think it's a very soft shooting gun. Uh, you're going to have this for a long time. Uh, and just pray that you don't have one of these uh, shitty slides uh, that I got. And, um, and the price is going to be worth it. So um, would I buy this again? Absolutely. Um, uh, I just we would just be super careful and watch uh, uh, what I put this gun in. I don't know 100% if it's the Osor or if, if the Remoil just um, reacts different to this. I really don't know. But uh, for me, uh, the price was, was, was right up there. If you want to buy this for a gift as somebody's first weapon, I would definitely recommend this over a Glock. Very soft shooting uh, and packs with a lot of features, metal sights instead of uh, plastic. Um, and, uh, and that's going to be my second point. The second point is I found this very, very soft to shoot uh, compared to my Glock. My Glock was a lot more snappier and this seemed like it's more of a, a more heavy barrel to me, but this one fired a lot more, uh, a, a, lot, a lot more soft shooting. When my girlfriend fired this one, she thought the same thing too. And she's pretty new to um, shooting multiple guns and she was like, oh, that Glock is snappy. And then she felt like this was so much better to the point where every time we go out to the range, she would want to shoot this over many other guns. So this definitely is a very soft shooting point. And then that leads me into my third um, point. It's fairly accurate. From what I was shooting, I don't know about any other people. I've seen a lot of people online and they were shooting it. Some had mixed accuracy. Some had it very accurate. Some had it, man, man, so, so accurate. For me, it was pretty accurate for me. Um, I was hitting my targets where I was sitting them, except for when I was having problem trying to figure out where the gun was shooting initially when I just purchased this uh, firearm. But after that, it started shooting pretty sweet for me. I didn't have a problem with it. And I think as you shoot through the barrel, you know, most of these barrels start getting acclimatized. A lot of times you don't see the true accuracy of a pistol till you put about 600, 700, 1,000 rounds through them. Then they really start getting into like some really accurate ter territory. And this was pretty much one of them. The more I shot it, the more I fell more in love with it. And the more I was disgusted by it because of that finish. <laughs> I know I mentioned that so many times. You guys can tell that that ticked me off. But, you know, besides that, it's a pretty it's a pretty sweet gun. Uh, one thing I like uh, one thing I like about Beretta, they didn't plaster their name everywhere over the slide. Some guns, you, they plaster their name all the way over it. That was That's my next point. A lot of guns you buy, you can see uh, the Beretta is just right there. You can barely see it. If you want, you can highlight that some more with some uh, nail polish, white nail polish, and you can rub that in and show it up more. I might do that to the slide or I just might do, do the Cerakote thing. But a lot of companies want to plaster their name all over the gun. I don't necessarily really like that. Once you see the gun, you kind of know what kind of gun that is. And on this side, you pretty much see no writing whatsoever, except uh, the serial numbers parked on uh, on the on the barrel on the top. But besides that, they don't really have too much writing, and I really like that. That's one. That's that's a pet peeve of mine with a lot of uh, pistols, and I do love that brother didn't plaster their name over this one. Um, my next point I'm going to go to is the modularity of this pistol. Like I explained before, this gun is very modular. You can actually, it's a chassis system, so pretty much a, uh, the frame, the, the, the meat of the gun is inside in the chassis. So you can take off this frame, take off the barrel, and the frame, you can just pull it out of the gun and put it into like a full-size bread APX Centurion or a subcompact. So you pretty much have three guns in one. You can turn this into a subcompact, the bread, the Centurion version, or you can make this into a full size. So that is that is pretty sweet. Uh, the, another pro that um, uh, that I liked about that is that with Glock, you buy a Glock, you know you're getting um, a plastic sight. You're getting a, a, a U-notch in the back and a, and, a, and a dot front sight, and that's plastic. You press check that thing, you might break it. With this, this is metal sight. This is not going anywhere. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it, as you can see on my sight right there, it's a little dirty. I don't know, again, 
I don't know if camera can focus, you can see how that dirty. You can change the color of that. Again, put some um, nail polish in that, make it more like a high-vis side. Um, but I love the fact that it's metal. And uh, the drawback that I didn't like about this one is that it's not um, not adjustable, uh, the rear side. I wish it, wish it was adjustable. It's removable, but not adjustable. So that's the downsides to that. I know I'm doing the positive, but the negative of it is that it's not adjustable. But I love the three dot side, they're not bad. Uh, for me, I just never understood why people put such large front sights on guns. I really feel like the smaller you can put it, the more better for me. Uh, that's just for me. Other people might not see that the same way, but for me, that's how I like it. So the fact that they put metal sights on it is quite a plus for me. Now I'm going to go into the negatives. Now the negatives, um, again, uh, I just stated one of them that the sights is not adjustable in the rear, and I really wish that it was adjustable in the rear. I love the fact that it's metal sights. And, um, and you can slide it left to right, but you can adjust it up and down for, for um, elevation, where you can do a little bit of windage right there. Um, besides that, uh, that's the only negative I have on the sights. Uh, the next negative um, I have is that uh, in terms of aftermarket support, you can't compare this to a Glock. There's not really a lot of aftermarket support with the, with the APX Centurion. This is not a gun that you're just going to go out and find a ton load of slides, cut slides for, slide with RMR, you know, um, lightning cuts on the side, uh, you know, different colors. You know, the aftermarket for this pistol is not going to, it's not going to be like that. You know, I find with a lot of Beretta, the aftermarket support is pretty much what uh, a few third party uh, uh, people will put out, but not the mass. You know, with a Glock, you know, Glock is like, you know, it's like an AR-15. You, your imagination is as far as you can go with it. With this, you might can do a little bit of something to it. You might can cut off the slide, open up the slide right there, and maybe do some, you know, some little uh, cuts in there to lighten up the, the trigger a little bit. And if you do something like that, you might have to change out the spring, and you might not even find the right spring to match that kind of cut in the barrel. So that's one of the negative with it. After aftermarket support is not that great. And, um, and, and, and that moves right into my next point, the negative. Uh, the aftermarket support from Beretta, the aftermarket customer support from Beretta is trash. Like I told you guys, man, I, uh, I bought this and within a month of me buying this, I start seeing this. And I immediately called Beretta. Um, they sent out a packet. They sent out, one thing they did, did do, they sent out, uh, I could send the, 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 the weapon to them for free, which was pretty cool. And it got there in a fairly decent amount of time. They had it for about two weeks. Um, and um, But they didn't do anything. And I explained everything before I sent it off to them. I got an email, took all the pictures, explained everything. I just felt like if you knew you weren't going to do anything about it, and I gave them HD quality pictures, they knew everything. I took pictures of the slide, the barrel, everything. And I sent it off to them. If you knew that you weren't going to uh, you weren't going to do anything about it, you know, um, like I said, the mags were pretty uh, were, were pretty chewed up too. I don't know what happened. You know, I don't know if it was rem oil, but you should. It doesn't matter what kind of oil you put on it. I mean, the mag should stand up. I have guns that are three times as old as this one, Berettas, and and they've stood up to the test of time and all that rem oil that I've been using on it. So I don't accept the fact that people say, "Oh, you are using rem oil." I don't care. I, I don't. I don't think so. You know, I'm not going to buy that. You know, and Beretta, you know, like I said, they've been making billions from our, our gun industry for years now. You know, the least they can do is have good customer service. Everybody there was so cold. I don't remember who I spoke to. I spoke to like a lady and I spoke to another gentleman. And they sound very polite, but they just didn't sound polite enough to do anything. A lot of manufacturers you send in, you have a problem. Even if, even if they don't fix it, they'll go ahead and send you a free mag. Beretta didn't do anything like that. And it's not that I want anything for free from them, but that goes to show that they give, they give very little about the customers. They make their money, they're Beretta USA, and most of the people that probably work there are probably Thailand's, and they don't give a, a rat's ass about the people here. Because if you're an American and you know what people go through to buy your firearms, a firearm is not, not necessarily cheap. Even if it's three fifty, five, six hundred dollars, that's harder than money people take to buy these firearms. So we expect to get some decent uh, uh, customer service. It's not like you, like you go to you know some mall and you buy a pair of shoes for sixty bucks and then you come back and complain that you know the finish doesn't look good. This is a firearm. This is this is this is this is some this is a whole week paycheck for some people. You know what I mean? So, you know, treat people better, man. And because of that, you know, um, I was going to buy something else from them. And I just changed my mind and I went with a different company. You never know how people take these things and what they do after that. But anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, so uh, that was the problem that I had. So the, uh, and again, um, with the customer service, 
And then uh, I think I spoke a little bit b before about this. Uh, you know, the slide, I didn't like how the slide finished. I've had other Berettas, like I said, and they uh, the finish on them a lot better. This is the youngest Beretta I've had. I've had this for about two and a half years now, going on maybe three years. And this is the worst finish on any Beretta that I have. So I went and I got my other Beretta just to do a slight comparison. Now, this is the youngest Beretta that I have. And you can see, like I said, that slide is trash. Okay, I'm not gonna stop ragging on them. And this is my PX4 Storm. I've, been, I've had this one in an Ulster, and I've had this one since 2009. And look at that finish. You can see the finish. Yes, you have a little bit of wear on it, which I expect to have if you're gonna wear it in an Ulster, but nothing like rust. And even the part where the finish is coming off, you don't see any rust on it or nothing. I expect that. I'm not complaining about that kind of stuff. But I don't expect this to be a two-year-old gun and have that kind of finish. Like, come on. And they, all my guns are in. So you can see, I do have some Osta wear. But the finish on this for being a two-and-a-half-year-old gun and this one, I've had this one since 2009. And the finish on that is way better. Now, I purchased this M9 about... Three years after I purchased that um, that PX4 Storm, and look at that, I've put about five six hundred round. But because this is one of your premier models, you can see this one still has some Ulster wear in it. But it look at that finish, and this gun is about five years older than this gun, and I've probably shot them just about the same. So the finish, you know. It's 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 ridiculous. Look at the finish on this thing. How can like why would I make anything up? Why would I destroy something I own? And people would say, oh, you 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 destroyed it and something you did. Nah, it's nothing I did. You know, it's I, like I said. You know, I didn't like the finish. And um uh and again um uh the other negative that I have to say about uh, the Apex and Turin. Now these mags are hard to load. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I've had dents in my fingers trying to load this sometime. And, you know, as time goes on, you know, this thing is going to definitely get softer and softer. Uh, but definitely uh, the finish on the mag I hated because the same is having the same kind of finish as the, um, you know, as the slide. Didn't like that at all. But the mags are pretty hard to load. Uh, it came with two mags. You know, I feel like, yo, if you're going to sell a gun like this, everybody want to be compared to a Glock, g give three mags. You know, put three mags in there and make sure they don't strip. You know, guys, it's been a really long review. I told you guys it's going to be a lengthy review. I really don't care, you know, if you guys, you know, stayed or go. I really wish you guys would stay. But I wanted to give you guys everything that I thought about this gun. This gun is an amazing gun. I'm going to tell you, I really love this thing. It's a wonderful shooter. Maybe that's why I'm so upset about it. Um, it's a very soft recalling sh shooting gun. It's worth every penny. Um, if you, if I had to choose this one over, a, choose a Glock and this one, definitely I would choose this. It might not have the same longevity as the Glock, but I'm telling you, it's Beretta quality. So you know you're getting a good quality gun. It's going to run forever. So that's one of the reasons why I would definitely uh, buy this one over a Glock. The features that it has, you know, it's it comes with metal sights, um, the serrations, um, even though they're not super great, they're great. The fact that it's, they don't have their name plastered all over it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a plus to me. It comes with three back strap. Um, it's ambidextrous, uh, meaning just like a, for a Glock 19, you're not going to get um, a fully ambidextrous weapon. It's got a chassis system. Um, you know, you know, you're getting that, like I said, that Beretta Italian quality. You know, it's an amazing gun. I would definitely suggest buying this, picking one up. Um, me, the only thing I would change on this one is the slide and maybe get one with like uh, with uh, with, with an optic ready. And, you know, because I'm trying to get into the optic ready uh, realm like everybody else is trying to jump on that bag one. And that's going to be pretty much a review. I know it was a little long, guys, but I wanted to give you guys everything I could possibly give you guys before you go ahead and make a decision. Guys, if you like the video, man, go ahead, like, subscribe, and share. Mr. Black Mamba, I'm here to give you great content. I'm going to try to crank out a little bit more. I know this review was a little long because I'm a little bit uh, ticked off about how this gun is because I love it so much. But in the future, I'm going to shorten the reviews and um, keep them uh, as minimal as possible so you guys can watch it. But I definitely want you to make sure you guys are well aware of everything on this pistol. Um, I didn't do a takedown on the pistol to show you guys how it takes down, but it's super easy. Go on... Um, 
uh, Google or YouTube and there's a bunch of other ones. I didn't want to do get in any violations, so I kind of didn't do the take down process, but it's pretty simple. Press here, press this button in, twine this up, swing this little lever up, and the slide comes right off. Uh, super easy. Um, if you like the review, guys, go ahead, like, share, subscribe, and um, help a brother out. Mr. Black Mama 305, signing out.